What's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you or someone you know? This happened about 3 years ago or so. I was sitting in the kitchen, and it was around 10pm. I heard a really loud thump in the basement. I live alone with two dogs, so any sound is somewhat frightening to me. As I'm walking down the stairs to the basement, I hear the thumping again, in an oddly rhythmic pattern. I creak open the door into the basement bedroom, and I see my dog is just ramming his head and body into the wall, over and over. I can't explain to you how shockingly unnatural looking it was. It looked like he was controlled or something. I called him over, and he stopped, and came upstairs with me. Three hours later, I hear the thumping again. I get out of bed again. However, when I went down to check it, it was my other dog that was ramming his head into the wall. It was like he was possessed. Scared the cheese out of me. Since then, nothing like that has happened, but that was an unexplainable event. I'm a biologist that often has to do field work surveying and maintain private properties in the middle of nowhere. Long story short, we find a body face up in a stream deep in a thickly wooded wetland. The body looked several months old, at least. No clothes, no tools, no shelter, nothing nearby to suggest who he is, or how he got there. We couldn't even tell race or gender from what we saw. We call the police and they immediately tell us that it's probably the missing person who ditched his car nearby. They apparently searched for weeks with dogs, horses, and ATVs but didn't find any sign of the guy. All they found was his family car loaded with cash and a handgun. They also tell us he seemed to be running from someone or something, real or imagined they weren't sure. Apparently the man didn't even close his car door, just ditched it at a rail crossing, and took off running into the woods in a tremendous hurry. I find his clothes about 30 yards up the stream bank from where the body was found. His pants were neatly folded and placed on top of his nice brown loafers, underpants and socks on top of those. He placed his glasses atop his socks, very orderly and in a nice pile. His shirt and undershirt were hanging from a tree branch right above those as if to dry. I mean, the whole thing creeps me out even a year on. But what unsettles me is the fact that he ran from his family, drove several hours from his home, ditched his car, and fought a mile through briars and thick woods only to stop and carefully fold and hang his clothes before meeting his end. I look him up every now and then and still can't find any more info about what happened or why. When I was 12, my family and I went to Sam's Club. Being a little idiot, I decided that I didn't want to walk with my family, so I wandered around looking at clothes and books. An employee kept watching me, like staring really bad. I figured he thought I was going to steal, so I smiled at him, so he knew I wasn't bad. He smiled back. He kept checking me out though, and asked me how old I was. We talked about my favorite books and video games. I remember being uncomfortable, but couldn't figure out why, because he was super nice to me. I remember wondering if he was flirting with me, but reasoned that he couldn't be, because I'm a boy. Really weird conclusion to come to, but I was 12. I genuinely thought he was just interested in my favorite video games. The conversation died down, and I decided I needed to piss, so I went into the bathroom. Less than 10 seconds later, and the restroom door opens. The guy stands in front of my stall, even though there were empty ones. I recognize the guy's shoes as the employees. I stand there for a couple minutes, done pissing, but really confused and kind of scared. I thought he followed me because he thought I was stealing. Then the guy held a camera over the stall door and took a picture of me. Like real quick, one or two pictures of me just fucking standing there looking up at the camera. My dick wasn't out or anything. Just me. In the bathroom, someone else came in, and he immediately went to the sink, and started washing his hands, like he'd just finished using the bathroom. Then he left. It was really creepy. I didn't tell my mom anything, except that the Sam's Club guy thinks I'm stealing. And she laughed. I realized way later, that he was a pedophile. I was midway through a 12 hours road trip alone driving all my college apartment stuff back to my parents house. Car was totally overpacked with boxes, a bike, keyboard, and the like. I'm very low on gas, so I pull over to a gas station in the middle of Nowertown, Georgia. 
sun is dipping low, and the gas station is empty, just off the side of the main road intersecting the highway. Few cars meander past on that road, but it's a quiet town. As I'm pumping gas, a scraggly thin guy walks up and starts mumbling about asking for the time. I tell him the time and make small talk, but not a word this man said was intelligible. All the while, he's circling the car and commenting on my stuff, but, again, I can't really understand his words too clearly. I make an excuse to duck into the convenience store, which I needed to do anyway. My bike was rattling loose, and I wanted a bungee cable to fix it more securely. As I go into the store and search for a cable, I notice scraggly man also enter, and he's was talking with the clerk of the store. On a scale of 1 to meth, the scraggly man was like a 8.5, but she's hardly even a 5 on that scale, much more trustworthy, while well, something about that guy gave me the creeps. Anyways, I find my cable, and as I approach the register, she makes small talk about noting my car overpacked, and asked if I was moving somewhere, all the like. She asks about the cable and I explain it's to secure my bike more firmly. She then tells me I should drive my car behind the gas station and they'll help me tie it up tight. Speaking in the plural, implying what I kinda already deduced, she and the man are associates somehow. Again, my car is just outside the window of the shop, in clear view of the main road. She tells me I should drive it behind the building, where nobody could see it, for them to help me tie it up. As though that help couldn't be done in the normal refueling area. At this point, my gdfometer is maximuming out, so I thank her, but tell her I'll be okay. I practically jog to my car and get in, locking the doors immediately. As I leave, I watch through the window as the woman and man are in a very animated conversation, gesticulating towards my fleeing vehicle. Could I have been paranoidly misreading these people, because they kinda looked like meth heads? Sure. But making an offer that sketchy is not a very normal thing to do. Back in the early 90s my sister took my nephew to a playground to play. When they were leaving she noticed a man approaching her. He was well dressed in a suit and seemed to be driving a beat up pickup truck. He asked her if she could drive him to the gas station a few blocks up so he could call a tow truck as his truck had broken down. She told him no, that would make her uncomfortable, but she would gladly stop at the gas station and call the tow truck for him. He started to insist it was only a couple blocks, and he was already very late for work. Now feeling very uncomfortable she said no again. He then got mad, really mad and yelled at her I only wanted you to take me home. She noped right out of there, jumped in the car, backed up quickly, and rolled the window down just enough to say, don't worry I'll call a police officer to help at the gas station, and sped off. She did stop at the gas station, call the police, and return to the park with the police officer. The guy and his truck were nowhere to be found. I was at my uncle's house in some countryside with my sister and we were playing hide and seek. My uncle went out to buy some food for us. I was hiding downstairs in this weird closet slash attic thing I found. I heard a little banging noise and got a little spooked. I then chalked it up to a little rat or something and continued to hide. I then heard a snore and a groan. I immediately got out and ran to my sister. We both sat at the door together, crying, until my uncle got home. My uncle just laughed it off and we were relieved. A decade later, an old man's dead body was found when my uncle tried to sell the house. It was revealed he was squatting there for almost a decade, and he had written in a notebook how he was going to kill my uncle and keep the home for himself, and I think that would've happened if he hadn't died. When my cousin was a teenager she and her friends went out to party a lot. In my country you can legally start drinking at 16, so most teenagers start going to clubs at 16. Back then, hitchhiking was still pretty common and most teenagers did it to get home or to the city, since only very few had cars of their own. So my cousin and her friend decides to go home after a night out and get picked up by a middle-aged guy. He's nice enough, and they make small talk while they drive. Suddenly, he takes a turn onto a remote road leading into the woods. He locks the car from the inside and his friendly facade falls. Instead he's suddenly tense, quiet and determined. My cousin's friend started crying quietly, but my cousin stays calm and starts talking to the man. 
She tells him about her family, her mom and dad, her brother and sister, and asks if he also has a family. When he tells her that he has a wife and two children, she asks for their names and how old they are, which school they go to, what their hobbies are, all while he drives them deeper into the woods. It must have triggered something, because after talking with him for a couple of minutes, he stops his car and breaks down. He starts crying and tells them that things are going well at home, that his marriage is pretty bad, and he fears he'll lose his kids. My cousin comforts him during his breakdown and lets him spill his heart out. Eventually, he starts the car again, turns around and drives them home, saying he's sorry. They get out once they reach the street my cousin lived on, and when he drives off, my cousin sees him put a knife on the passenger seat that he had kept hidden next to him. They never hitchhiked again. I was 11 and my brother was 4. It was late at night and we were alone. My mother and stepfather were out, along with my little sister. Since we were not his children, we rarely got to go out with them. I was watching TV and my brother had fallen asleep next to me on the couch. From the couch you could see a large window with sheer curtains. Outside of that window was a parking area. I realized there was a man at the window. He just stood there looking in. This was before cell phones, so I couldn't call my mom. I tried calling my aunt, but she lived in another town and I think she thought I was imagining things. I tried calling the police, and they said they'd send someone, but they didn't seem to be taking me seriously either. The man started to try to get the window open. I was paralyzed with fear. At some point I realized I was shaking and this snapped me out of my panic. I tried to shake my brother awake, telling him there was someone trying to break in, but he was so deeply asleep that I could not rouse him. By this time I was near tears and shaking so badly. I couldn't leave my brother there and the man was still trying to get in. As I'm trying to lift slash drag him, I hear the front door coming open. It was my family returning. It turns out that they had walked right by the man. He was leaning against a car. He greeted them and asked if they had a lighter for his cigarette. My mom later remarked on how friendly he seemed. I definitely feel like someone was watching out for me and my brother that day, minutes later and the man would have likely been in the house.